Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Made For More podcast. Today I am joined by an exceptional leader and woman in the business sphere. Uh, It is Karen Brown. Karen is an innovative, award-winning pharmacy owner, pharmacist, and entrepreneur. Karen is the managing partner of Terry White Kemart, Arana Hills, a multi-award-winning pharmacy, including National and Queensland Terry White Kemart Pharmacy of the Year titles. She is also a partner at Terry White Kemart Fernie Grove, In 2021, Karen was recognised with Australia Day Honours being awarded the Dixon Small Business Person of the Year. In 2018, Karen was awarded the prestigious Kerry White Kemart Pharmacist of the Year for her dedication to improving the health and well-being of her community and her former Samford Pharmacy won National Terry White Kemart Pharmacy of the Year. Karen is a member of the advisory boards for Terry White Kemart, University of Queensland School of Pharmacy, Australasian College of Pharmacy and PSA Leadership. In 2019, Karen, a former Queensland Firebird netballer, founded Batch Tested, Australia's only online platform guaranteeing athletes have simplified access to batch tested and certified sports supplement uh, and nutritional ranges. Karen is first and foremost a pharmacist and pharmacy owner, but overall an entrepreneur making the most of opportunities and combining her passions for pharmacy, sport, business and people. She is constantly challenging the status quo, takes great pride in coaching her teams to be the best they can be as individuals and as a business. Wow, we what an amazing uh, intro! And you are in for an absolute treat for today's episode on the podcast. It is an absolute banger, uh, Karen. I loved it. I loved our conversation. I loved our discussion. If you're looking around uh, leadership in 2023 and the future, and bringing people together and on the journey. Whip your notebook out. Uh, This has got so many gold nuggets when it comes to kind, connected, courageous leadership. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Made For More podcast. I'll be sharing my experiences along with some actionable advice to take your leadership to the next level. Introducing your host, it's me, Ali Nitschke. I'm a leadership and courageous conversations expert, a Nutella lover, a mother of four young boys, a wife and a dance floor junkie. I'm here to give you the motivation you need to level up, lead yourself, lead your team and your business. Let's go. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Made For More podcast. Today, I am joined by a new friend, uh, Karen Brown. Karen and I recently met when I was up in Brisbane and held a networking event and over breakfast, I was absolutely blown away by her story and couldn't wait to have her on the show. Hello, Karen. How are you? Hello, Ali. Thank you for having me. It is absolutely my pleasure. The world does work in weird ways, doesn't it? That, it does. Yes, it we does. came together and here we are chatting. Wonderful. I love it. I love how these things work out and I think all good things happen over uh, over breakfast. <laughs> so, uh, Karen, share with me a little bit more around your history for those that are listening and those that are watching. Where did you come from and where are you going? Yeah, where do I start? Um, I wear a lot of hats and a lot of them, um, I suppose, where I started, first and foremost, I'm a pharmacist and I own pharmacies here in Brisbane. And I was 14, actually, when I decided I wanted to be a pharmacist wow. and um, I wanted to help people with their health. And I thought they looked like really good places to work. And so during my upbringing, obviously, yeah, graduated, went and did pharmacy at uni, uh, but also have a big sporting background. So I grew up in a very sporting family and um, also was privileged enough to represent uh, the Queensland Firebirds in netball and play professionally across the country and New Zealand, et cetera. And so, uh, so much of what I do in business is what I learn in sport. And I think sport is a phenomenal foundation for teamwork and leadership. Um, and I very much coach my team. Uh, and I also run another business called Batch Tested, which is all about helping athletes access um, tested supplements. So, 
as I said, I wear a lot of hats, but there is a synergy between all of them. And at the core, it's just about helping people, whether it's with their health, whether it's athletes, whether it's fellow pharmacy owners, whether it's my team. Yeah, I just like helping people and getting the best out of them. I love it. I love it. So let's backtrack a little bit. When you were 14, you thought, yep, pharmacy's for me. What was it that prompted that interest around becoming a pharmacist or was it working in a pharmacy or what was it that you know no, I just I knew I wanted to do health um and yet my family um my dad was an engineer my mum was a swimming coach my brother's a lawyer so there was no health uh component in my family it was so I was a bit like left field that I wanted to be in health and I think as a 14 year old I didn't really want to be a doctor in at that stage a GP practice in five white walls and sitting in a room all day Um, and I really like the look of pharmacy and I really like uh, the aspect of being a part of the community and you know really that trusted um, yeah that central hub of the community and that's what I look at now and think I am living that dream that I get to truly make a difference in people's lives um, and really be the centre of a community and I love that aspect of it so very, uh, you know, it's quite rare, I suppose, to know at a young age what you want to do and then to get to actually live out that dream. Um, yeah, I feel really blessed. I love that. So if I think to your childhood, you had a dad who was an engineer, very, um, I guess, analytical minded, and then mm. you had a mum who was a swimming coach, which is not for the faint hearted or those that like a sleep in. I can imagine your household was very, um, very well organised, but also had very high standard of what the expectation was for you growing up. Is that yeah, sure, and um, so my dad played football for Australia. My brother played rugby for Queensland. So, and my mum swam for Queensland. So yes, we came um, very high performing uh, family and very um, yeah sport centric, team centric. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say there was a high pressure. Like I didn't, I don't remember my childhood being that. You know, there was all this pressure to succeed. I think it was just naturally um, you just wanted to. Yeah. Um, and I think even when I look at leadership, you know, and I question, I think there's a part of you that you can be a natural born leader and yeah. there's a very much a learnt part. Um, yes. But I look at my childhood, you know, um, I was school captain, I was sports captains, house captain. So I think there is a, you know, there is something that you can see in kids sometimes that you go, you're going to be a leader one day. Yeah. Um, and I definitely think that probably came from my parents and, competing with my brothers and I'm six foot two, um, smallest child in my family. So Oh no way. Yeah. So I feel like I probably always had that presence with my height as well. And I was always quite confident that unlike, you know, it really saddens me when I see teenage girls and we're getting taller and taller, the generations. I was at a netball function on the weekend and blew me away how tall the under 17 netball team was. Um, But I think there was a time where people really hated being tall and um, kind of, you know, slouched and all that, whereas I was always quite proud of being tall and, um, yeah, yeah, it didn't phase me. Um, So, yeah, I think through my childhood, definitely very sporting family and um, those kind of team roles and leadership positions, um, yeah, were just part and parcel of our upbringing, I suppose. Yeah, I think a lot of it Very is that, that, family. <laughs> that nature versus nurture, but also when you're talking around, like we we weren't necessarily pressured to do well, but we wanted to. And it's that intrinsic motivation that is absolute gold yeah. when you can tap into it. And it's this elusive thing that we're always, as leaders, trying to embody and also trying to tap into for our teams as well. Um, so tell me a little bit around the transition from uh, school going yes I'm going to go into pharmacy to uh, playing for the Firebirds were you studying at the same time as also playing professionally or like how did you manage that that seems like a heavy load yeah so um, whilst women's sport has come phenomenally in leaps and bounds particularly in the last few years um, when I was playing 20 years ago we did get paid to play but it was $100 for a win, $50 for a loss. So we all did work or study at the yep. same time. And, yes, that was a big load. We pretty much uh, uni full-time. You train in the morning, train at night. You travel on the weekend. Um, but I think, and it's what I talk to uh, when I do talk to teenage or school-aged children at the moment, is I feel you are so much more productive. Um, I yep. am super organised. Um, I think sometimes when you don't, or what I see at 
high school is parents say, you know, I want you to focus on study. I don't want you to do any extracurricular. I don't want you to do any part-time work. I just want you to focus on study. But I think whereas I was, I knew I had two hours to get my homework done before I had to be at netball. So yeah. I was super organised and um, quite a few got things done, didn't leave it to the last minute. So it really teaches you some good habits when, you know, your diary is full. And I think as well I was playing netball because I absolutely loved it. So yeah. it was a hobby in a way. Yeah. Um, and some of my long-term friends are from netball. So, yeah, I love the sporting world. And I was just fortunate that I got to study at the same time. And actually, I think studying and sport is easier than working and sport. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And they you always can skip say a lecture or two, whereas you can't really just not turn up to your exactly. shift at work. So. Whoops. Yeah. Um, they they often say if you want to get something done, give it to the busiest person in the yeah. room. Have you heard that saying? Because yes. I also uh, grew up doing professional ballet, well, as a ballet dancer, but, you know, 20, 30 hours of training a week as well as school and then transitioned into professional dance. And it was always the busiest people and the ones who on yeah. paper had the least amount of time that got the most done. Do you think, why do you think that is? Is it because you've become really structured with your time? Is it because, you know, we give ourselves as much time as we allow if you've got going to take three hours to do something it'll take three if you're going to give yourself an hour it'll take an hour what is it that you think, I think it works both ways I think uh like if I think with school people go oh I've got all afternoon or I've got all night to do that they procrastinate they stuff around and then eventually get it done or leave things till the last minute yeah whereas I feel when you're quite structured to go yeah. I've only got this amount of time to get this done but yeah. also I think I look at people that whether it's sport or any extracurricular or passion project kind of thing if you really love doing it you constantly want to be better so it's that little one percenters it's that determination it's yeah and I suppose I like to prove people wrong so I think there's that just that competitiveness in me that you know you want to show that you can do that and achieve that and um yeah, so I think it's just people are just produ more productive when they know that they've got, and equally some people can crumble under that as well to go, I've only yeah. got an hour to do that. Um, but, yeah, I've always been a planner and very organised um, and almost, uh, I wouldn't say I don't like things off the cuff, but I do, um, it was quite, I'll share a story. I did Kokoda back in 2019 with right. a group of uh, for Terry White Kenmark for a charity for Ovarian Cancer Australia and there was 10 pharmacy owners, our CEO and our head of operations. So quite a high-powered group mm -hmm. that was going to Kokoda and we were annoying uh, Glenn who took us over there. We were annoying him because we wanted to know exactly what was the elevations, what was the distance each day to make sure that we'd all done the exact training we needed and he wouldn't tell us. He said, no, I'm not going to tell you. You're just going to wake up each morning and then we're just going to set off. Um, which was a really big change because, yeah, as I said, we were all planners. Yeah. We all wanted to make sure that we'd walk the hill that we needed to walk, that we done it. the distance that we needed to do. So it totally put us out of our comfort zone. And in the end, it was um, it taught me so much and that was almost just be in the moment and don't get ahead of yourself um, and don't worry about how high the hill is going to be. Just actually put one foot in front of the other and be in the moment and then voila, you're actually at the top of the hill instead of thinking, okay, I'm climbing 10Ks today up a 1K hill, et cetera. So, yeah, yeah, it was a really interesting when he just blanketly said, no, I'm not going to tell you in advance. You're just going to turn up on the morning. Um, I love it. Yeah, yeah I, I think I'd be a pest about that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell me just quietly, like I won't tell anybody else. Just let me, yes. let me yes. prepare, let me prepare yeah. myself and my mind. So yeah. what do you think was one of the biggest lessons or is there anything that you've taken away from that Kokoda trip that you've adapted into your, I guess, working life, uh, private life, professional life now Yeah, from um, not one of knowing? My, yeah, one of my favourite quotes from it is be where your feet are. Ooh, and it was a really good. interesting um, activity that we did out on Kokoda. So it's, you know, you're on the track for nine days. Yeah. And as I said, each morning he would say, okay, today we'll kind of go up, then it's a bit flat, then we'll go down, or today's all up or all down. That's as much information as we got to know. And then there was a section where probably wow. on day six or seven where he said, actually, we can almost, in inverted commas, race up this section if you want to. It's a bit of a each, each tour, there's a bit of a challenge that whoever wants to time themselves to get up this hill, um, you know, these are some of the markers from previous groups. 
So half of us that are super competitive were like, yeah, we're racing. And the other half were, no, we'll just cheer you on and follow up behind. <laughs> I love um, it. But it was really yeah. interesting because someone gave me their watch. So I had a time frame that I knew I wanted to get there, up there. I knew how long it should take roughly. Um, I knew the hill, like it was very steep. And it just messed with my head. Like I was really struggling. I went off quite fast and then was really struggling. And I remember looking at the watch going, oh my God, I'm only 10 minutes in and this is half an hour. Like, oh my God, I'm not even halfway yet. I am yeah. spent. Finally got to the top, threw the watch off and I said to my friend, you can have it back. And then he actually said to us, he said, that is actually not the steepest hill you've done. But the fact that I had a watch on and was timing and had parameters mm. just totally messed. Like I even got to the point it was so hard that I was like, just pretend my kids are at the top waiting for me to get there. And yet previously those hills, because we were just taking one step at a time, we weren't looking up, we didn't really know when it was ever going to end, you just got there. Yes. But this one where there was parameters and that. So it's really like I'm very much a for thinker always looking ahead but it really taught me to kind of just be where just be where your feet are and try and be present I'm not perfect at it but I'm really trying so whether you're at home whether you're at work whether you're I coach netball all the different hats I wear yeah just try and be present um and you know and not to mention the trip itself it blows your mind about you know you know the culture the history the people you know, kids walking to school for three hours, um, you know, it just blows your mind how happy they are and it's not a device in sight. They have none of the luxury comforts that we have. Um, Amazing, isn't it? So, yeah, it's a truly amazing experience. But, yes, the biggest thing, be where your feet are. And what a beautiful lesson to learn in 2019 before having to really settle down and focus where your feet are and be where your feet are. We were so fortunate to... um, to be able to do it when we did and mm. yeah it was and also you were off the grid um yeah. and so you were non-contactable uh it also is a lesson for many business owners and um one of the ladies that came on the trip she said you know it made her actually prepare her business that she said it made her look and go actually if I got hit by a bus tomorrow yes. no one would know how to get into that account how to open that who's got a set of keys that so it actually made you really yeah fill proof your business to go, yeah. someone cannot contact me for 10 days. What yeah. do I need to set up in my business to make sure that they'll be okay kind of thing? So, um, yeah, it's an amazing experience. How good. I love that. And did I wouldn't you- do it again, but it was an amazing experience. <laughs> It's <laughs> still recovering, still recovering after that 10 minute steep hill or the half an hour steep hill. I love that. So um, I just want to backtrack or kind of go around a little bit more. So you had a very successful career uh, with Firebirds as a professional netballer. Then you are also a very successful pharmacist, pharmacy owner. Uh, you, we'll talk a little bit about batch tested in a moment. Tell me around when you first joined the workforce, um, when you first bought your first pharmacy. Tell me a little bit about that. I actually, um, I was only six months out of registering as a pharmacist when I got offered my first partnership. Yep. So I always knew that I wanted to be in community pharmacy. I always knew what I wanted to own a pharmacy. Yep. And I think, yeah, so much of what I do in business is what I learned in sport. And I think right at the core, the similarities, you know, we're bringing a group of individuals together for a common yeah. goal, whether that's to have the best pharmacy, to win a premiership, et cetera. So, and I'd coached, uh, I'd obviously played in a lot of teams. I'd coached teams. I'd managed teams. I'd been captain of teams. So I uh, bought my, I was managing partner at 25 yeah. um, and, you know, managing people older than me mm. uh, that have been in the game a lot longer than me, but I have always kind of gone along the philosophy that I'm I'm coaching the team and there's a lot of different roles that you play in the team. Um, but it didn't phase me. I, I'm i uber competitive. Uh, when you do your strengths testing, competition is number one for me. It's yeah. off the charts. But I constantly want to be better and I constantly want to be the best and how we can push the boundaries and um, the little one percenters and that's yeah athlete in me I think once you're an athlete you're always an athlete um but even in my leadership it's 
I want to lead by example. I want to inspire those around me to be the best they can be. Mm. Um, and I think from a sporting analogy, I think the roles that I will as a leader, I think there's many roles that we play and I think we can get stuck in certain roles. And I think definitely in the pharmacy space in the pandemic, it was the craziest three years of many people's lives um but being in the health sector and being on the front line that you were open the whole time and it was yeah it was unbelievable um but we probably played the captain role where you were yep. literally on the field in the in everything yeah pulling off the big plays getting run out of trouble etc um but i think it's also important to play the coach's role in the grandstand with that bird's eye view seeing what's working what's not working what's coming up uh, but sometimes you've got to be the referee and you've got to set boundaries and you've got to make the big calls and uh, you've got to bring a sense of calmness and control. And a role I'm trying to play at the moment is the the supporter and coming off the bench yeah. when they need me, yeah. being the water girl to give the pep talk, um, but also just being the cheerleader and letting yeah. go and kind of sitting back and realising that they can pull off the big move on their own and that they can be stars in their own right and that I don't need to suffocate them and always be there for them that they yeah. actually, you know, that have done well enough to get them to the place where they can do it on their own. And I think that's as a leader, you just wants to constantly breed the next generation of leaders. Um, and mm. so, so yeah, I was, yeah, I owned a pharmacy at 25 and I've currently got two pharmacies, but over the last 15 years have had been a partner in four. Wow. Um, and yeah, had huge success. But I think for me, um, you know, I, my main pharmacy that I had for 13 years in a beautiful community in Brisbane, um, I love just being the centre of the community and being involved yeah. in all the sporting clubs, being up at school, talking to their school captains. Mm. Um, I loved that people really relied on us uh, to really, as I said, you get to impact generations of family and it's pretty special. I love that. I think there's definitely a book in that. We'll have to come back to that outside of this because by the time we're talking about all of those different avatars and roles, I'm like, oh, that that's a good, uh, yeah, that's a good it's book, a good I reckon, analogy. for you. Something yeah. anal- I suppose analogy that people can really, um, and, you know, when I was speaking to a group of uh, pharmacy colleagues on the weekend, it actually makes you sit back and go, how much time am I spending in each role and mm. where do I want to mm-hmm. be? And that actually was feedback from my team where I think as a leader it's sometimes really hard to get feedback like we give yeah. feedback but to, yeah. for you to be appraised is really hard and so I like the start stop keep um little concept yeah. that I do you know maybe once a year but yeah. that was some feedback where they were like um stop trying to fix everything like just ah, let us what try a and work it out for ourselves or don't I think that's maternal kind of instinct that you just want to go in and you know if there's an issue with a customer or they're trying to sort something out you just want to help them and it's yeah. no no just let us try and work it out for ourselves yeah. and we'll come to you if we need you but we'll yeah. never be able to do it if you keep kind of dumping in so yeah. I think that's that letting go and realizing that um yeah they can do it on their own and then it's that proud mum moment when you're sitting there going wow look how well they're doing um and also I think as an business owner we we get into ownership and it's 24 um, 7 mm-hmm. and the reason you do it is so you can have some freedom and flexibility but if you're gonna ironic 24 7 in there then you know you never find that balance and I'm also not one for balance I really like the lean in philosophy of lean in to who needs you most at that yep. time love it um, whether that's your family your loved ones your team yourself um it's I suppose identifying which it is that needs you to lean in um rather than and I also think at balance nothing fun happens at equilibrium so I always oh, want to nothing of, fun happens at equilibrium yeah, I, I love that seesaw. you kind of it's going to go up it's going to go down but you know and I'm kind of my one of my favorite sayings is build the plane while you're flying it that don't right. wait for perfection um, you know, just get going and yes, have a parachute ready, but I'm more of that kind of launch and adapt as we go and what do we learn from it and how will we change it next time, then I think you can waste so much time waiting for perfection. Yeah. I, I'm a big yeah. person to figure it out on the way yeah. as well. Uh, it doesn't yeah. always pay off, but geez, it gets things done. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Sure. And I said there's more fun then. Like I said, you know, it's, it could go up or it could go down, but yeah. you know, you'll at least you've tried. 
Have a crack, give it a crack. It's one of my... I love it. Yeah. So you've spoken quite a bit around um, the role of coaching as a leader for mm. your your team uh, and for your businesses. I think coaching as a concept in traditional leadership or in you know corporate leadership uh, is relatively new a new idea. Did you know that that's what you were doing way back then, or you, that's just sort of you know you'd spent however many years uh, yeah. coaching through netball that you're like oh well of course I'll just bring it into the workplace. Yeah, uh, and now that you're you're, and I'm guessing you're probably seeing a little bit more of it as well and hearing more about the importance of coach as leader. Are you realising that you've been doing this all along? Well, I think yes and no, but I think the coach's role has changed. I think the coach potentially a decade ago was the barking down orders mm-hmm. coach mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, yeah, yelling out to his team, this is what I want you to do. But yeah. I think it's changed. I think the mindset now is we are all in this together and there yeah. is no hierarchy. Um, but I think I've always just seen myself as a coach of, as I said, I'm bringing a group of individuals together and how do I, and I think some of the best coaches in the world actually aren't the best stat analysts. Like they've got all those people around them. They're actually yeah. just the best people managers yeah. and bring out the best in people. Um, yeah. And I think, the other thing with all those roles I mentioned is you've got to play a different role for different people in your team at different times and that's mm. the joy of leadership that, yeah. you know, your senior leadership team want you to be the support and the cheerleader but your young one coming through wants you to be the captain and wants you to learn and I love all that. I love that situational leadership and that it's not just yeah. a one-size-fits-all um, but, as I said, right at the core to me you're bringing a group of individuals together a common goal and I talk um, definitely at my main pharmacy which is Terry White Kamatarani Hills I talk about the team around a bus so we have this very um, graphical kind of team charter of getting on the bus and what does it take to get a ticket on the bus what's your role on the bus what do you bring to the bus but then where's the bus going where's the destination what if we turn left, we should have turned right? Are we prepared to go off track and create our own path? What's our fuel supply? What if we hit a speed bump? Um, I'm very big on creating an environment where people want to belong. So I think I've always just in that sporting world seen myself as either the captain coach or the captain yeah. at the time. Um, but, yeah, they're just it's just people. We're just helping people. And pharmacy is a very interesting space in that you've got people that are in it as a career, as a pharmacist, and you may have them for 5, 10, 20 years, but also you have assistants that are doing it while they're at uni to become a lawyer. So you have transient staff, you have people that are fully invested in it as a mm-hmm. career, mm-hmm. and so how you mix all them together. Um, but my general philosophy is if you leave a better person than when you started with me, then I've done a good job. So, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so, so many gold nuggets of leadership oh. in our discussion today. Um, I did want to quickly touch on your additional hat, your batch tested, which yeah. I think is an amazing, we, we talked about this briefly over breakfast, but can you share a little bit around how that came to be um, yeah. and sort of, you know, who you're working with now when it comes to that particular company, the batch tested company? Yeah. So batch tested came about uh, pretty much, of supplements that you'll find in the pharmacy or the supermarket contains a prohibited substance that Mm -hmm. would result in a positive drug test, career ending for an athlete. Um, And to the general public, they are perfectly safe, uh, but the drug testing sensitivity has become so um, amazing that they can pick up minute. So there's a list that's put out every year that are considered prohibited substances. And probably 20 years ago, supplements were deemed you don't take them at all. Mm -hmm. Um, But now it's been established that pretty much 95% of athletes want to take a supplement, whether that Mm -hmm. be a probiotic, immune support, fish oil, magnesium. Uh, So there's a lot of companies out there that get their products third-party tested to show that they don't contain these prohibited substances, but the athletes could never actually then find those batches that have been tested. So in my role as a in pharmacy and as an athlete, I had quite a few sports dietitians reach out to me that said, look, you get drug tested, Help. you've been drug tested, you know all these companies, can you just bring it all together for us? And I, I'd i like to, one of my things is I like to say yes and work it out afterwards. And so we had a big meeting in the lead up to Tokyo Olympics and I walked out of the meeting with my business partner 
And he's like, what did you just say yes to? And I thought, just hang on for the ride. Let's just see where it takes us. <laughs> just hang on for the ride. Yeah, I love it. Just it's like one hand on the side in my life. But, um, and so it's, as I said, love being back in the sporting world and it's just peace of mind for these athletes. So pretty much they can contact us and they know that every product we range has been third party testing and is uh, less risky for them. Um, so yes, we deal with a lot of the Australian teams and the NRL, the AFL uh, work. Uh, with the doctors, the dietitians, the high performance managers. And it's really interesting because sport pharmacy is huge in the US, uh, not really recognised here in Australia. So uh, that's probably a little pet project of mine is to bring the role of the pharmacists into sporting teams and the way drugs work in sport, medicines work in sport, how we can get players back quicker. Um, So, yes, love working with athletes and love being part of their yeah, so it's part of their care team is yeah. how I perceive it to be. But, yes, and, a nice and little side a project. It's a beautiful collision of your two worlds. It so is, absolutely it's so, is. It's so great yeah. and it's helping future athletes as well as educating as well as and making sure. Education is the biggest part. It's, yeah. a, it's a minefield out there for them. Um, and as I said, it's really interesting in the general public we are innocent until proven guilty, but for athletes, they're guilty until they can prove they're innocent. So ah. it's massive in their world and yeah. the scrutiny uh, that they are under from a drug testing. Um, mm-hmm. Mac Horton, who is famous for his uh, clean sport, he is one of our ambassadors and he won't even order a smoothie at a cafe, not because of what protein might be in it, but because of how it might be cleaned from the person before if they had protein powder. So it is to the wow. nth degree, these athletes, um, everything that goes into their body, uh, yeah. You don't so think about such a, um, I guess, f- for me as a as a general correct. non-athlete, yeah. uh, non-competitive athlete, uh, going, oh wow, I've never thought about my boost juice potentially having a prohibited substance from a previous person's smoothie correct. that may or yeah. may not have and been. Everything they Gosh. just have to be so careful, yeah. um, just wow. in their day to day lives. So, and obviously through the pandemic immune um you know an athlete mm. doesn't want to they get to race in the olympics every four years they don't want to get sick the week yeah. before the olympics so, yeah double down um, probiotics so and- yeah supplements are definitely playing their role with athletes and it's our job to make it as safe as possible for them i love it i love that so and good. i love the variety like i genuinely love that each day there's something different i like yeah. and that's something i love about pharmacy is that anytime someone walks in i don't know what they're going to ask me um, yeah. So I do, I love the variety of all my hats. <laughs> it's so good. And it is such a diverse, it's just such yeah. a diverse hat rack you've got going on. Uh, this has been amazing. I think my favourite quote so far today, and I'm going to go back and re-listen, is nothing fun happens equilibrium. I've not heard that before. Absolute banger. Uh, if you could go back in time uh, and some things that you wish you knew or perhaps some imparting wisdom for new and emerging leaders, what are your top five tips? Yeah, I think one of the biggest learnings I probably in the first decade with sport, you're very goal-driven Yeah, and that can be quite tunnel vision. So definitely something I've tried to adapt over the last five years is kind of take the blinkers off and keep the periphery open because you never know when an opportunity is going to present itself. Yeah. Um, and as I said, when that door opens, just say yes, because you never know. Even, you know, the breakfast with you, if I had yeah. not said yes, we wouldn't have met and where does that lead kind of thing. So always say yes. Um, surround yourself with good people and in that I mean like a real mixture. You need your yeah. cheerleaders but you also need people that will challenge you mm. um, and really bring out the best in you. So you don't just want everyone going, you're doing a good job. You want yeah. people that do really talent you. Um, and I think just create an environment that people want to belong. I think that's if you do that, then they're invested and they want to be in your team um, and that indirectly benefits your business. So, And at it. the end of the day, we're all just human beings. So just bring out the best in them um, and then they'll give back tenfold to you and your business. Love it. Is that five? Oh, is that five? Um, no, well, you don't have to do five. Oh, well, I think some of them. Three. Yeah, don't wait for the kind of person. Don't yep. don't wait to cross all the T's and dot all the I's. Just yep. just launch and see what happens. Love it. I'm a risk taker. So good. <laughs> and they've paid off. 
Absolutely. And if they don't, there's always a lesson in there, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. That's right. So be where your feet are. Be where your feet are. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time today. I've loved our chat. If people want to connect or reach out to you, where's the best place for them to find you? Yeah, LinkedIn's the best place. I'm LinkedIn. Yeah, quite active on LinkedIn and uh, yes, all the different um, channels it opens, I think is really great. Brilliant. I will put your links in the show notes. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been amazing. Lovely chatting, Ali. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this episode on the Made For More podcast, please make sure you subscribe to receive future episodes. And of course, five-star reviews are always welcome on the Apple podcast. If you'd like a copy of the show notes or any of the links mentioned today, check out madeformore.com dot au forward slash podcast and of course if we aren't connected already you can find me in all the usual places ali nitschke on linkedin ali dot made for more on facebook and instagram i hope you have an awesome week and i'll catch you again soon bye bye